<laughs> you don't need to see better. We're audio. What? Do you want me to read this? Go. All right. Now, OK. You go. OK. And now, fresh from the news desk of business development platform The Advertist, it's the new business briefing with me, Keith Smith of The Fuel Podcast, Donna Smith of The Advertist, and business research analyst Victor Horton. Each show will bring you 10 minutes of news, insight, people moves, tenders, and market reports on one of 24 different sectors, all designed to help you in the new business community stay informed and at the top of your game. So the clock is ticking, the bell is rung, so let's get going with the new business briefing brought to you by new business development platform The Advertist. Hello everyone, I'm a Smith called Keith and you may have heard of me before on the new business podcast Fuel and I'm here with the editor of The Advertist, Donna Smith. Hello Donna, how's your week been? Fabulous, how about you? Yep, very good, thank you. But quickly tell me, why do you think this little 10 minute format is better than my 70 minute podcast? Well, Keith, everyone loves the Fuel Podcast, but uh, the new business briefing is a quick overview of a sector for busy agencies and new business people. And I talk a bit too long anyway, yeah? And uh, anyway, get networking is uh, is the new currency, so uh, these little nuggets are, are quite good for being valuable to your clients. And also, 10 minutes is all we get for free from Headline when we produce these little audiograms as well. Okay, that said, and without wasting any more time, let's get into it. What sector are we looking at? This week, we are looking at the financial sector. OK, and we're going to drop a few news headlines and insights that might provide some great talking points for any business developers out there. And in a few minutes, beaming in live from London is our great friend and desk research wizard and qualified librarian, Victor Horton. So, Donna, the financial sector of The Advertist contains what sort of companies? It is a broad range of banks, building societies, insurance groups, all the way through to investment companies. Great stuff. OK, right, let's get going. Here's a cool news story that's worth dropping into a conversation. There's still some value in targeting the big name bank brands as well as those fancy new fintech finance brands because a new report published by Plum Finance shows that traditional banks are still preferred over these newfangled neobanks. Plum is an open banking app connecting bank accounts with its saving algorithms and it polled 450,000 people for this information so it's quite extensive and it found the following nuggets. 91% of Plum customers are linking traditional high street banks to Plum despite the boom of digital-only neobanks like Monzo, Revolut and Starling, suggesting these challenger banks still have quite a way to go before moving out of the friend zone. While 18- to 24-year-olds have a somewhat stronger preference for neobanks, with 13%, the dominant age group for Plum customers, which is 24- to 34-year-olds, is lower at 9.1%. The 55-plus cohort shows the the least interest in neobanks, with 95% linking traditional banks to Plum. The most popular neobank just out of interest overall for Plum customers is Monzo, and the most linked traditional bank is NatWest. So if you're targeting the big banks, bear in mind they have the greatest amount of loyalty among the over 55s, and if you're targeting neobanks, make sure all your marketing works on TikTok, right? Okay, so Donna, DL, the woman with the finger on the pulse of the beating heart of the marketing industry, what's shaking in the advertise this week? Thanks, Keith. Uh, this week we have recently seen proper Property Master, the digital buy to let mortgage broker, appointing Christopher Brown as its head of digital marketing. Brown commented, Property Master is the clear leader in the buy to let mortgage broker space, and I'm excited to come on board and help drive the digital marketing strategy and bring its market leading offer to a wider audience for its business. So there you go. Could be a review in the offing. And there's over 200 people moves a month, as well as the only single source for all UK and European marketing, PR and digital tenders in The Advertist at www.theadvertist.com. So call the team for a free trial on 0203 356 3717. Give them a call. Go on. Now we cross over for a deep research dive into the finance sector. By day, he's a mild man of bespoke desk research wizard. And by night, he's, what, asleep watching EastEnders? Asleep, which is exactly on trend for the lockdown period. <laughs> it is the, probably the fastest growing hobby, and it's Netflix's greatest competitor. <laughs> it's Vic Horton of VH Insights. Hi, Vic. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? 
I'm very well, thanks. I'm very well. How's the dog training coming along? Is, is Rex getting anything from Santa? Uh, well, probably more time in his cage, I expect, <laughs> um, because he's uh, he's just such a, a difficult pupil. <laughs> but he is a Jack Russell Terrier, so they are very, very difficult to train. Very lively, very lively. Now, um, Donna and I just took a quick look at the news and uh, the people changes in the finance sector. Um, but I know you've got some really juicy stuff that uh, anyone working on new business development would love to know. So what uh, anecdotal intel have you got for the finance sector? Well, it's uh, all about financial independence, which used to be an expected milestone on the classic journey into early adulthood. And according to a study by Wilmot and Nelson uh, called Complicated Lives, the development of that once realistic ambition began some way between moving out from your parents after finishing education and starting a family. That was the template for many of us in our 40s and older. But now financial independence is hard to pin down as today's young adults move out from their parents, move back in, get a job, move back out, then back in again to save for a deposit, <laughs> if at all. Then maybe in their 30s, consider having a child, if at all. They may even consider getting married, but whichever path they choose, it's less likely to be in a straighter line. So imagine how hard it is to define your audience now. Once it was a nice, large, round target in the field, but now it's a piece of gum stuck in the tail of a kitten frolicking in a ball pit at Ikea. <laughs> Try and pick an age where moving out from parents happens. Is it 18, 25 or 31? This is a difficulty I've faced many times when researching for financial services prospects. You can pick a financial line, landmark, maybe achieving that full-time job or applying for a mortgage. But today, it's as important, if not more so, to seek common attitudes rather than material similarities. That's why it's still surprising to see assumptions about demographics being made by financial marketers. For example, Global Web Index found that fintech startups spend 500% more on marketing to millennials than any other demographic group, despite 67% of people in their mid-50s to mid-60s, not that far off the 72% for those in their mid-20s to mid-30s throwing a, a huge stink bomb into the melee of life-changing events. The effects of the pandemic have formed their own financial landmark, forcing people from every type of household to think differently about their finances. The crisis hasn't been a great leveller, according to YouGov. Some have been able to save more than usual and pay off debts, most likely those working from home, whereas those already with financial difficulties have found themselves in an even worse position. For those who have got by or find their financial situation improved, financial service providers have been rewarded with an increase in trust. Mintel's study of trust in the sector found that, unlike the last recession, which was arguably the fault of the financial industry, banks took a supportive stance towards households. When responding to a Forrester survey in May about how banks handled their response to the COVID-19 pandemic, 55% of UK online adults believe that their bank had acted in their best interests. They warned that the honeymoon period won't last. The goodwill built up during lockdown is at risk of diminishing as payment holidays come to an end or repayments are increased. The move towards whatever normality eventually becomes may be just as tumultuous as the crisis that preceded it. We'll see how successful the financial service providers are in adjusting to the changes that will determine the new landmarks in consumers' lives. Very true. I love that kitten analogy, Vic. I think you're right. I, I, th I think this, this year has definitely kind of paved the way for a, a, a genuine revolution in the in the banking sector. And there's certainly a, a, a real opportunity for, for new business in there. That's great. Thank you, Vic. Um, now, if anyone listening wants uh, any tip-top desktop research on any sector or company, um, they should drop you an email to? Victor.Horton, H-O-U-G-H-T-O-N, at vhinsights.com. Perfect. Or you can just sit and wait a couple of weeks until we publish the next show in the second week of January. Fabulous work. All right. Well, listen, um, you have a great okay. Christmas and uh, have a wonderful new year. You too. Thank you, Vic. Okay, folks. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of the New Business Briefing, brought to you in association with the new business development platform, The Advertist. Take care, everyone, and have a great Christmas and a happy new year.